Hi, I'm Trevor Lund from RiffDrift.com, and I just am very excited today to uh, connect with uh, Jeff Goins. Uh, Jeff is a, a writer, a blogger, a father, and um, you know he's. I've, I've read a couple of books that he's written very recently, and I thought it'd be great to to have him on and introduce him to uh, the RiffDrift readers. And uh, Jeff, thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you, Trevor. So, Jeff, you've. Um, the books that I've read of yours recently are, uh, oh, what, what's the, <laughs> I'm trying to, <laughs> you're a writer. You're a writer. Yeah, huh? it's, it's not Shut Up and Write, that's a different book, right? <laughs> it's the same kind of thing. You are a writer, and then Wrecked as well, it's coming out very, very soon here. Um, and I, I just, I, I gotta tell you, Jeff, this is, uh, you're the person to talk about this first topic. When, um, you know, when we're talking about, I wanna talk to you about how authors can build their brand. And, and, you know, when I first kind of, kind of came akin, when I first came into contact with you, I was reading about 120 blogs a week. You know, I, I had them in their RSS feeds and I was going through them. And I got to tell you, this might be an exaggeration. It might be kind of an illusion, but I, I got to say you were on 30 of those 120 in like a week and a half. <laughs> and I was like, who is this guy? What is he doing? And that's when I started connecting with you just because I, I liked what you were writing on other people's blogs. And, um, you know, I, how, first of all, let's start. What is an author's platform? Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, I think a platform a lot of people, I mean, that's sort of a, a buzzword now. Uh, I mean, obviously, um, a lot of people are probably familiar, uh, you know, especially online with Michael Hyatt's book, Platform, which talks all about how you build that. Um, but I think there's a lot of misconception. Uh, what I, uh, I'd start by saying what, it, what I don't think a platform is, is a platform is not a blog, it's not a website, it's not a speaking career. Not really. Mm -hmm. um, those things are tools. What a platform really is, is people. Oh. And so anytime somebody's trying to build a platform, they're trying to build an audience. They're trying to earn permission to communicate with an audience so that they can sell products, uh, write books that actually get read, uh, communicate and have people listen to them. You know, Whatever it is that they're doing, they're trying to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's an important thing to remember. And, and I think it's more than just um, you know, mere uh, uh, you know, semantics. Uh, so, you know, do you, do you use a blog to build a platform? Is that a great tool? Absolutely. But you have to remember that all that is is connecting with people. It's a tool that you use to connect with people. And so my platform, if my blog goes away tomorrow, I still have a platform mm. uh, because I've spent uh, a year and a half of connecting with people, uh, serving them, helping them. So I could turn around and start another blog and I might lose some of my readers, but people would go, oh yeah, I remember that guy. And so, I mean, that's that's really important. So you don't want to build your platform on something that isn't relational. So and, and when yeah. you're when you're saying that, you know, like my first thought was, okay, so he's kind of equating platform with tribe because it's all tribe mm -hmm. marketing. But then when you, the more you talked, it's like, no, it's actually people. It's not this thing called a tribe. It's not this thing called a platform. It's actually connecting and and being there to serve other people. How yeah. how what's what's been effective for you? To, how do you serve people? Like, what what do you do to build your platform or your tribe? Well, um, you know, I think I tried some things, and uh, I think the things that were effective were not things that I were be I was being intentional about. But in retros <laughs> in retrospect, people would say, "Oh, I love that you do this," and I'm like, "Really?" Yeah. So, you know, so one of those things is is just um, sort of the language in, in which I speak. Uh, you know, not English, but like the vocabulary that I use and the vernacular that I use. Um, and I just try to write in a way that's really conversational and accessible. Uh, I think you can overdo that on blogs, um, yeah. but uh, that's just kind of how I talk uh, mm -hmm. and how I communicate with people. If we were to sit down for coffee, that, you know, how I, you know, write an email or something is how I would, you know, communicate with you. So I, uh, I do do that on purpose, but I just do it because it, it feels like an authentic way to communicate. But I know that that was an important part for people is my voice. And uh, so I try to, now that I've heard that, I try to be intentional about that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I blogged for about six years writing about me mm. and just assuming that people would care. And some people, some people did, you know, uh, 
like you know my parents and my wife uh, and you know a handful <laughs> of like, colleagues and friends and you know a few strangers. Um, but then when I started this blog a uh, year and a half ago, I set out to do something different. And uh, very quickly, I realized that um, I had something to offer that people were interested in. I, you know, so I started. I started a blog is talking about a lot of different things. I didn't want to just talk about writing, but I found that that was one of the subjects that I uh, apparently knew a little bit about and resonated with people. Mm-hmm. And so I think it was um, the voice, and then talking about a subject that was relevant to you know a large group of of hungry people and um you know doing it in a way that was was pretty practical and and helpful so uh, at the end of the day what i try to do is um look at the struggles and problems that i've had as a writer and just turn those things around you know to in, into articles and content that can help people that's almost so. that's almost biblical, you know. Like <laughs> the struggles that we've gone through have been to mm. you know encourage us so we can encourage others, right? Yeah, it, that's right. Um, you, uh, what what's are you intentional in building your like? Are you saying like when you started this blog? Did you say okay in eighteen months I want to be at this position? You know I wanted this result, or were you okay? I've got something to say, and I want to start saying it. Yeah, no, no, I didn't have any sort of goals. Um, really, my one goal in the far distant future was to get published. Mm-hmm. Like that was the only thing I wanted to do was write a book, and so um, so I started the blog knowing that I needed a platform to get a publisher to notice me to, to get a, a book out there. Um, what I didn't anticipate happening was for a pretty good size audience to uh, assemble uh, pretty quickly. So you know, I, um, I I did like my my goals were more qualitative than quantitative. I wanted to show up every day and write great content that I could be proud of. And mm-hmm. and when I, I you know I blogged for years on, on a lot of different platforms, and it was like I think what most people do with a blog, where they write and they sort of like you know just kind of throw you know in, in twenty minutes throw some content together and put it out there and go, why is no nobody reading this? And so you know I wanted to create something that I could be proud of. Mm-hmm. And um, and so what what has happened in effect is uh, I've sort of created this resource, uh, you know, a blog, uh, you know, I've got about, you know, over 400 articles on there now. Um, and uh, I mean I can point to just about everyone and go th- like this is this is a great post, you know, um, not patting myself on the back just saying in, in as much as I could make it good, I've I've put it all on the table. I've tried as hard as I could. To share everything that I know, or or be as helpful as I could, or write the you know the best, most interesting piece that I could. Um, so that's not to say it's better than than all the rest. It's just the best that I could do. Mm-hmm. And uh, people might not know what is your blog. What? So my yeah, my blog is my name is Jeff Goins, and so my my uh, blog is just my last name GoinsWriter dot com. Goins is G O I N S, like coins but with a G. GoinsWriter dot com. <laughs> Now, if you're talking to to writers and they know they need to build their platform, what are what are some practical things that they can do right now? That you know, what is it? Is it Twitter? Is it blogging? Is it? I I think you already touched on it. Like for me, I mean, it's it's I don't ever want to put out junk. You know, there's stuff that I I you know I, I don't I don't like. I'm recording this now in my temporary studio, so it's not like I've got everything the way I want it to be. Yeah. One day it's going to be a big uh, green screen. We're going to do some really funky stuff. We're going to have the whole, you know, everything is going to work out great. It's not that yeah. I, but for today, this is the best that I can do, and I'm, I'm right. I want to have that quality out. What 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 are what are what can what what other advice or what what can you emphasize for writers to build their platform that they can do right now? Well, an important but obvious one is to write. Mm-hmm. And uh, I wish I wish we could take that for granted, but we can't, you know. And so for years, I was writing, and I like kind of you know here and there. And I, and I didn't consider myself a writer. I considered myself somebody who wrote, uh, just because I didn't. I lacked confidence. Yeah. And um, so you know, the, one of the, one of the first things that I do, and it was part of that ebook that you mentioned, you're a writer, and it might, may sound kind of like silly and you know positive thinking mumbo jumbo but I think it's it's um, important if you want to be a writer if you're somebody who writes uh, first of all 
uh, call yourself a writer, believe that you're a writer, uh, because there's there's just kind of this interesting shift in your mindset when you start calling yourself something, you start living into it. It's like, oh, I, if I'm going to call myself this, I better act like it. Yeah. And uh, and so you know, the second part is is act like it, write. And I, I remember talking to lots of friends who'd become authors, and I was like, how do you do this? And they all said the same thing. And I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. What's the real secret? And, but the real secret was the same thing that they all said, which was write every day. Yeah. Find a way to write every day, even if it's you know 100 words. Find a way to write, 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 write. So yeah, I mean, what you're talking about, you want to put quality out, but there's this tension of um, I want to put something out, but I also want it to be the best that it can be. And so you know, the thing that I encourage people to do is um, once you sort of believe that you're a writer, even if you have to fake it at first, uh, and you start writing, um, you know, pick a frequency that feels, you know, healthy to you. Um, so, you know, writing once a week is probably not enough. Um, and, and I was doing, you know, I was writing three or four hours in one sitting, but I would only do that once every other week. Mm -hmm. And so when I got serious, I was writing every day, even if it was only for 15 or 20 minutes, and I became a much better writer. So, you know, all of that is, is, can probably come, you know, go under the banner of find a way to practice. Mm -hmm. And, and then the second part of that is find a way to publish. Mm. Um, so, you know, blog is a great way to do that because it puts your work out there. It forces you to, uh, practice in public. It forces you to share your work with an audience, even if it's only, you know, your grandma for starters. And, when when we know somebody's going to read what we're writing, it we want to make it a little bit better. Yeah, and and there's all kinds of cool marketing things associated with that. I mean, that's that's how you know you might get discovered, you know, to get a publishing deal or whatever. But just when you're beginning and you want to write, you want to get into the habit of writing. You need to write, and you need to find a way to share your work. And that could be with you know writers group or whatever. But um, you know, if you don't know what to do, I'd start a blog and start sharing it there. It's easy, it's free, and uh, people will read it. Yeah, and I, I that's one of the, the reasons I love blogging myself is that I um, if I write something on the blog and the people's comments, they, it just it makes it better, you know. <laughs> like it's like yeah. I didn't think of that. Oh yeah, I, we gotta add that. Oh, we gotta change that. But yeah. well, I want to thank you, Jeff, so much. We uh, we're getting ready to to help launch his book wrecked and so we want to uh i want to just interview him a few more times uh so we're gonna cut this one off now and uh thank him for sharing and um when we come back we'll we'll talk more about uh how authors can define their brand but thank you so much jeff and uh people, you, people can connect with you at goingswriter.com yep okay great let's take uh, catch you next time this episode has been brought to you by expectancy press Resources that impart hope and empower destiny. What do you do when bad things happen? You can thrive with the Live Positively resources at RevTrev.com.